Oh man, this one's late guys. I'm sorry. We were out of town all last week and we were in Izmir and there was an earthquake and a hospital and let's get on with it. Quite interesting news in Star Citizen as of late, so let's get to talking about it. And make sure to stick around to the end so you can see who won the October ship giveaway. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. And a shout out to my two newest YouTube channel members, Sam99 and Catfish Hunter. So far this fall, Inside Star Citizen has been heavy on the UI improvements. This is no surprise as the new Building Blocks UI creation tool is quite mature at this point. Last week was no different. We got to see the first implementation of a OEM specific HUD interface, which is expected. This falls in line with the effort to get every manufacturer to have a different look, feel, sound, history, and philosophy from one another. If you'd like to look into more of the differentiating of any brands, make sure to check out my series on it up here or in the video description. Now, the main question this differentiating of HUDs brings up for me is we saw a new mining interface last week, but that wasn't necessarily OEM specific, right? So are only flight HUDs gonna be specific? Are we gonna see differentiating HUDs for mining, refining, fuel scooping, or scanning? Or is it just gonna be for the basic flight and combat HUD? because the UI isn't necessarily that hard to change because of building blocks, but would it be efficient given the amount of time it takes to make a good UI? Having every single manufacturer have their own specific UI for every single profession that they service would be a little bit too much, but it'd be cool, which kind of sounds like the Star Citizen way. Now, all this being said, I really enjoy what they have done with what we've seen. I think at this point, CIG has proven that they can make some really good looking UI. Is it always the most functional? Well, no, but holy crap, is it not my sci-fi dream of a user interface? The spread, the details, the lines, even though there might be too many, the parallax effect, and good lord the animations, it all looks very very cool, and just makes me even more excited for future user interfaces such as, hmm, scanning maybe? Speaking of which, check this out. This is the scanning interface from two years ago. See how similar it is to this segment of the UI showcase this past week? That may be a peek at the new upcoming scanning interface. I was wondering if they were gonna continue with that concept or not as I thought it looked very encapsulating. And I'm really satisfied to see that similar aspects from that concept years ago are still making an appearance today. While this UI may seem very complex and busy, I am kind of a fan of interfaces that appear complex for the first 30 minutes until you get used to them. They're fairly easy to get a hold of in general, but as you get to use them and you know them by heart, they start to make you feel rather accomplished in mastering them. It'll take some time to see if it rings true with the Aegis HUD, but as it moves forward, I'm hoping that it retains some of that immediate intimidation factor that I'm seeing in this current showcase. Speaking of intimidation, take a look at this screen. So in this episode, we were finally, after long last, introduced to the engineering profession in something more than words. We're finally seeing the return of focused development on professions, refining, medical, cargo hauling, and now engineering. An incredibly important profession, a profession that speaks more than just about the job that needs to be done, but the systems that need to be in place for that job to be done. Item 2.0 and the pipe system. Two features we haven't heard about in a while are imperative for the engineering role. These systems have been slowly worked on for more than three years now, and they are finally beginning to provide tangible results in various aspects. One of those aspects is the new introduction of damage types in weapons, which I covered earlier this year. You can check that out in this video as well. But another is this ability to control not just a ship, but every single minute detail of how that ship runs. 
The engineering gameplay in Star Citizen will take advantage of two of Star Citizen's most distinct advantages over other games. One is that every single interaction in this game takes place from a personal first person perspective. And two is that all objects in this game are created from the ground up to interact with one another using Item System 2.0. Now, we already know how the first person perspective will lead into this, but there's a pretty good document that I'll link in the video description for your digestion that'll talk a little bit about how item 2.0 is going to impact this gameplay. In this document, we learn that every ship is equipped with pipes, which carry resources such as data, power, and heat. In order for a ship to run correctly, you must manage these pipes against their corresponding systems to remain efficient and functional. This could require running throughout a ship cutting power to unnecessary components, diverting power from one shield wall to another, or completely cutting off and abandoning an entire section of your ship. This is the most complex gameplay we've seen introduced to Star Citizen thus far. And while it's still in the prototyping phase, it speaks towards how incredibly deep this game shoots to be in its professions and quite honestly, gives me a little bit of relief in that regard. Every time we see specific gameplay that actually matches something that they've said in the past they want to do, and it lives up to it, oh, it builds my confidence in the game. See, if we look at this 2013 concept of what they want to do in words, and then look at what they're showing us now in the actual game engine and prototyping phase, they're pretty close. They're actually doing what they were saying they were going to do all the way back in 2013. And the nice part is that while this offers a ton of modularity to gameplay, it doesn't require it. You can have an engineer that is a master of just the Idris, knows it inside and out, exactly how to target it, put it out of commission for boarding, or exactly which nodes to cut to provide optimal defensive capabilities. Or you can have somebody who just understands the basics and is passable enough to keep a ship running. It's that sense of easy to pick up but incredibly difficult to master that I'm always looking for in Star Citizen. And that combined with player choice is something that I feel like they are always striving to hit and it always keeps me coming back. I'm sure you guys can tell how excited I was about this episode and what it showed. As I've said before, they seem to be transitioning more towards professions again as several tech hurdles seem to be on the horizon. I'm keeping an eye out for more info on salvage, refining, medical, mining, and exploration gameplay to show you guys in the near future. If you want to stay up to date with that and what else is going on with Star Citizen, consider subscribing to this channel. Now for our monthly ship giveaway winner, I would like to congratulate the winner of our October giveaway, Randy Hatchet. Thanks for subscribing, commenting, and following on Facebook. Make sure to email me at the email listed in the video description so we can verify you and get you your ship or I'll need to pick a new winner in four days. Our next ship giveaway will be for a 100i starter ship. You can enter in the video description in a multitude of ways and possibly win a new ship at the end of November. Of course, you guys can check me out on Twitch where I livestream a multitude of games and host giveaways every week or join the Space Tomato Gaming community on Discord where I host community play days and other giveaways as well. Thanks again for sticking around guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks to my top supporters TK, The Alpaca, The Huntress, Patrick Burt, and Renzo B.